start the recording. Um, we just for the recording, if you're catching this um, on the recorded version, uh, we were talking quickly about Educause. Dr. Chuck and Didi attended, and there's some notes there in the Etherpad. Um, a quick update from those folks. Um, <clears throat> as far as announcements, I just wanted to remind everybody that the Sakai Virtual Conference is in two very short weeks. Um, so if you've not registered yet, please do. Um, the sooner you register, the sooner you'll get your swag because I do um, send them out as people register. Jeremy, did you get yours yet? You, you and Martin registered early. Yeah, I even put it out there on LinkedIn showing off my swag. So Nice, uh, nice. I didn't see that post, but yeah. I'm not on LinkedIn that much. So. <laughs> well, it's just through the, just through the LAMP uh, learning console. I don't have an individual uh, account. I just do it through LAMP. So I've oh, okay. been, kind of, been trying to be pretty active through that. So mm -hmm. Cool. He's been um, highly active through that. Been following. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it too much? I have a question. Is it too Not, much? Um, I would I would separate it a little bit farther because um, it's it's the visuals that make it that make me realize I haven't read that particular item yet. Okay. So anyway, we have a great program uh, planned. You can view the schedule there at the conference website. We've also got lots of games and prizes planned as well. Um, the 15th is going to be Sakai presentations, as you're accustomed to. Um, on the 16th, we're having a couple of post-conference sessions, uh, workshops on Xerti and Materia. Those are two open source content authoring tools um, that are similar to um, things like H5P or maybe Soft Chalk or um, some of those things that you can create games and activities to drop into your course via LTI. So we'll be taking a look at those two tools um, on Wednesday. Um, so um, it's, it's going to be a good time. So if you've not already registered, please do. And um, without any more ado, we'll move to our, our main topic for today, which is the Trinity UI focus group. So um, for those of you who were here when um, Kunal did a quick demo of the Trinity, um, that's the new portal look for Sakai 23. And so it, it just got merged into um, Master. So it's in trunk right now. You can preview it on nightly. And I have a link here. And what I thought we would do is just kind of take a look at it. You guys can go there directly if you want. Here, I'll, I'll paste the link in here if you want to grab the link from chat. Um, and uh, just kind of navigate around and see what sorts of things um, we might suggest as improvements because there's still uh, quite a bit of time to make little you know tweaks and subtle improvements between now and um, when 23 rolls out next year um, and and we really want to put our best foot forward because we're going to have a lot of attention on Sakai uh, because of Sakai Plus and other things. So we really want um, the new portal to wow people. And um, so if you've not seen it yet or you've not seen the latest because there have been changes since we last previewed it, um, it it's here on Nightly. So I'm going to just kind of let you guys um, comment as you see things. Feel free to, to pipe up on the um either chat or your microphone i'm just gonna try to log in here and navigate around a little bit all right so you'll see it uh the favorites up at the top are gone if you're accustomed to seeing those. So the navigation's been moved. That's probably the biggest change. Um, and then we've got some different buttons over here for different things. And there's this slide out menu um, for the uh, preferences and stuff. So that's how that worked. I see the icons are added back in. That was something that the icons were missing as of when I looked at it yesterday. So that's been added. So that's cool. I'm sure there's other um, things that have not yet been fixed that are known issues. So I think QA at this point is kind of holding off a little bit on making um, JIRAs for things until they know a lot of the known issues have been 
reported or fixed rather. And um, so some of this, we might not necessarily make JIRAs today, but I'm recording this so I can share it with Adrian and Kunal and whomever might else be working on uh, on Trinity to kind of tweak it just so we can remember what people say. So let's see. I see Didi going eek. <laughs> um, Christina says she has the improvement that's needed. The current site should stay expanded to get to a new tool. The user has to click twice once to re-explain, once, once to select. Yes, that's that's an excellent observation there. So if it's unpinned, it didn't go if it's away. Unpinned, does it does it refresh? I, it doesn't look like it did. Yeah. It Mercury site. Yeah. Oh, it's still one of your sites. It's just not a pin site. Well, no, these are the pin sites, and where are the rest of them? Are they they down here? Most recent. There's the view all my sites at the bottom. Yeah, so it didn't move. It probably um, just it's the right. pins. Yeah, it, it needs else. it needs to maybe either auto refresh or give you a message telling you that you need to refresh. You know. So let's see if I unpin it. It's still there until I refresh and then it goes away but that's a little disconcerting because a lot of people expect it to either just go away immediately or um yeah i would expect it to or have a little note like reload like or refresh. refresh to see your list something like that mm -hmm. um what do you guys think about the pins coming up like here like I, hidden until hover I, i'm not crazy about that um well, if they're pinned and they're under a list that says pinned, I don't think they need a visual that they're pinned. I do think that. I had a question if it's accessible. Can someone with a yeah. keyboard only get yeah. to that quite easily? Yeah. That and. Um, I mean. It would. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing the pin next to the pinned ones. It wouldn't bother me necessarily. Um, it would at least let me know that they are indeed pinned because there seems to be kind of some weird white space going on in between the different sections. I, I'm feeling like that view all my sites button needs to stay glued at the bottom of the window, not at the bottom of the scroll bar, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because yeah, because you lose you track of it. If you have a lot of pinned sites mm. and you don't think mm -hmm. to scroll down. Yeah. You don't That's see a good that. Point. Whereas yeah, that should stay at that bottom before the scroll. I don't know how visually if that can be done or not, but I, I feel like having it at the bottom of a long list of pins, if someone doesn't know to look for it there. Is it still in the box, in the nine box, or the information on the right-hand side somewhere as up well? Here? I, yeah. I don't think so. Wait, that's view all sites? That's a weird icon for view all sites. Well, didn't we have a nine box or something over there for that? Yeah, it, it previously used the checkerboard. Yeah, it, it just that's a it was it was a nine box. It was the other way around. It was white. Oh, space it was a filled a, in. Yeah. Okay. Was, so this looks like a table to me. It does look like a table to me too. <laughs> I, I prefer the other version of the waffle. Well, it? Yeah, it was a, it was a waffle, and, and the reason why it's had to be done that way is because of that black banner. So because before it, it's it's been done with a nine box, they're all black. They're all solid black, and so does that make sense? Well, can yeah, you yeah. all solid yes. white, though? White yeah. Do what now? Just reverse the color on it. Instead of the, the nine boxes being black, they would be white. Yeah, maybe. That might work. I, I think I that would work. Need to make it. Yeah. It um, actually, let me look on. I also like the idea you all mentioned about the view all my sites down there at the bottom. I, I think that should be posted up toward the top instead of the scroll. Line. Yeah, I mean, right here, there's the waffle in white. Yeah, no, that's the Isn't one that I would want to see. Same thing. Yeah. Isn't yeah. That, I mean, it's the same. 
it, it, we have two buttons doing the same exact configuration on the screen at all times, one in the upper right and one in the lower left. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Yes. So it's that redundancy, is... but I think it's okay because um, you might not click down here. You know, it's especially if it disappears. Little... <laughs> yeah, especially if you can't find it. Um, I think, and you might have it collapsed as well because remember, you can collapse. If you this can collapse, right? And expand. The, and the other thing that you see there, if you if you scroll back down, Wilma, the, both both wall they look a little different, so they need to be consistent. Yeah, see, this is the waffle I'm accustomed to, and that's the one I would want to see up here just in white, not black. Right. Yep, yep. And again, I'm a little, this, the white space in between sections is bothering me. Um, it just seems like such a big gap um, in between. I know they're trying to differentiate, but maybe that could be done with maybe slightly more Adding. difference in font sizes. I mean, the font sizes are pretty close here. So maybe like the, um, I'm not sure what font that is. Looks like a, like a, a Calibri actually, or any other, what, sans yeah. font. It doesn't look the same as this font quite. Which is okay. Yeah. I mean, it is visually Defining. Yeah, it needs to, it needs to be, you need to be able to tell the difference or maybe, um, I don't know. See, I like how the pin is staying there mm -hmm. stay, on the top where it says administration workspace. That one shows the pin. At yeah. All times. I like that. Yeah. I think the pin should be visible. I don't like the hover. And then you know if you've unpinned it, it goes away, and hopefully the refreshes. list refreshes. Okay. Um, what do you all think about how the I, pin sites have all the list? I guess that's supposed to be where it's usually been at the top, but would there could be an option to collapse pin sites so that you know you don't you know so if you click there it would collapse, but then you right. can open it and see all your pin sites. And then it would pull up most recent sites and then it would pull up the waffle as well. So you mean the collapsing of the mm -hmm. second menu? Yeah. The pin yeah site so does, each does. of these probably we would want to do the same if you were going to treat it that way. For pin, you'd want to be able to collapse and current or recent. Collapse current because that would only have only ever have one site listed. Correct. Right. You wouldn't want that collapse. That's correct. But pin sites and perhaps most recent could be collapsible. Yeah. Depending on how many how many sites yeah. does most recent save and is that something that is user customizable? Or admin customizable? Yeah, I don't know. I I think or it's is a it property, but I'm not I'm not sure. Be nice so if that it was two or three. Well, I'm log I'm logged in as well. And so it's only showing three most recent. I would say that's how it's programmed, just to keep the most, the top three recent um, mm -hmm. areas, because I've only been in two areas, and the other one says an invalid URL. So if I clicked on something else, it's probably going to tell me that's the most recent. So it probably does three. It, you know, Let one me of the things. See that because I've got three. I've also got invalid URL at the bottom, and I've been into. Do you have to click into the site to get to I, it? I don't know. See right here, I'm a little confused about what site I, I'm in. I think that if it's pinned, it's never going to show up in most recent. Well, that. No, no, no. I mean, the problem is, is if you do that, if you do that, then you use up all your vertical space, right? Yeah, but if you have, say, 20 pinned sites. Yep. And you want to find, oh, I was just in that one. Yeah. Well, then what we should do is we should order pin sites by most recent as compared to move them. I think it's a mistake to have the same site four pla three places. Yeah. That'll be really confusing. I do so like that imagine... idea of the pin sites is the most recent, but then it would be changing order. Would that yeah, matter to an end user? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think if this that pin site starts 
I think we ought to be able to drag and drop the pin sites and move them around as compared to just like randomly, seemingly randomly moving them. In the yeah. current UI, under the sites menu, there is an option um, to organize favorites and you can control the order in which they appear at the top. Is there anything? Um, I don't view all my sites. Yeah, it does have an under view all my sites. If you click on the waffle, there is an organized pinned. Yeah. Tab so we can users can control that order. Okay, so I've got a question. I realize this uh, is, is a little bit of a, a bending of the, some of the nav over here, but how many people think they would actually use most recent sites regularly? Me when or, I'm bouncing between about five things trying to troubleshoot between this section, that section, and the third one. Okay. Because I'm just wondering, I don't think I would. I don't think I would look down here. I think I would go to pinned sites most of the time and then go to all sites if I needed something that wasn't in that list. For for me, I think most recent sites should be above the pinned sites. That's site. exactly what I was going to offer as well. It yeah, is. and I, I agree about that too because when I'm bouncing between sites, I'm normally doing it in that top banner and I've yep. pinned my mm -hmm. most, they're not my most current sites, but they're the ones that I frequently go to most often. So if that's removed or otherwise inaccessible, then it's like, well, how do I do that? I'm going to have to go through this scrolly thing. Yeah, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. So you would want to keep recent sites it. but move it up here? Yeah, right up underneath the current site. So you have current sites, then most recent, and then you have your pinned sites. And if all of them were, well, you know, if all of them were collapsible, that would be great. Uh, because I, I think one of the things that we need to have is a clean UI. And so mm -hmm. I think it, the ability to have a clean appearance it, is a good thing. Personally. The only thing I'm going to say is I think the invalid URL site and maybe even home should not be able to pop up under most recent sites. Good that point. makes a hundred percent sense. Especially the invalid URL, because that's not a site. That's just a congratulations. Yeah, just... Not, well, it technically is, but it's not one that people want to visit. Yeah. So is there a way to, you know, flag something is not not an actual site? Not not pinnable and not marked as a most recent. Yeah, because home would always be most recent if you're coming in. So yeah. you that's can always seems... get to home by clicking on the little oh. Sakai oh. jewel at the top. So Great. you don't need home as a as a favorite or of most recent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm a little confused about what site I'm in because I clicked on the jewel, which should return me to home, right? Yeah. And up here in the breadcrumbs, it says I'm at home. But in my current oh, site, it tells me I'm in the admin workspace. That seems like a, a an iframe reference issue. But yeah. you are in the admin workspace. That's where you're at. Are no, you're, I'm in home. No, oh, you're not. You're oh. in the home of the admin workspace. Why? But look at the breadcrumbs. Home, home, overview. <laughs> home, home, overview. But open admin workspace you're not in the server admin workspace there's two right. of them look right oh wait well, see it didn't uh -huh. change sites but if i click on overview let me go into a tool wilma are you yeah there's something on? going on here sorry what did you say christina are you logged in as admin yeah okay because when i do it as a just instructor it does change the current site to home. Is it because we're admins? Because we're admin. Okay. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Let me just log in as a user. You um, user. <laughs> I think there's a faculty account in there, right? This faculty. Okay. Well, that's a little different. The border that lets you know you're logged in as someone someone else like it does yeah. when you change when you super user in in the current version that's cool all right so i like the border more than changing the banner color because the yeah color is a lot more obvious which means if i'm doing screenshots of a user's account to say see here right here is exactly what you need to click on 
wonder do you think people will get that that's what the the border is or do they need to be told no i think i think it should be in the admin um you know screen screen guide screen steps yeah. guide and that says that people who we have being admins are at least relatively intelligent yeah that's true agreed all right so let me since this user doesn't have any sites i'm just gonna make a couple so And we'll just select a few things. I want to select all button there. Yeah. I really do. Although all would be a bit much given how many tools there are, but yeah, it would be nice if you could select. But if it was a smart all where it selected all and then you can unselect the three out of the whole list that you yep. don't want. Exactly. That's yeah, a that's lot true. less quickly. All right. So let me, I'm going to. I'm just going different ways to see. Okay, I can't get to it there. Interesting. Yes. No, I have to go through the waffle. Okay. The light mode, dark um, mode being opposites is very interesting. What? Did you see that on the bottom? See where it says light mode? It's oh. got a dark button. The dark mode has a light button. Do, do, do. Huh. <laughs> I think it's probably just whichever one is highlighted is. But yeah, <laughs> that's that is kind of interesting. interesting. That's kind of opposite. <laughs> All right, let me just make another site so we have more than one to navigate through. So, um, great. Sorry, you guys have to sit through this. If you want to comment on other stuff while I'm doing that, feel free. So I got in kind of late. So essentially, then the navigation per course is going to go from the top to the left, and we'll keep we'll keep the clean area on the top as just the standard sort of banner area. I like the fact that the jewel actually takes you back to your home because I think that's something that's been lacking. Noticing a little weirdness up here when I save. Let's see if it, it happens again. Yeah, see how that hamburger gets duplicated momentarily? Maybe somebody got one. I don't know. That, yeah, yeah. I see that. there's something going on there, and it was over here too. It was like the icons were. I don't know if it was something with the the recent fix on the icons, but but yeah, there was definitely something weird going on. So. All right, let me refresh. Okay, so now I've got a couple of sites. It looks like it automatically pinned them. So let me unpin one. Just like newly created sites always get to your favorites. Yep. Okay, where did it go? You all my sites. Can you, uh, could you resize the, the window for us just to see how that looks? Make it bigger. No, no, or... just resize uh, either. You know, oh, 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 okay. Make it smaller, just kind of curious to see how it responds. I mean, I'm... okay. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I, yeah, because I haven't visited it yet. It doesn't show up in my recent. I kind of almost want all my sites, whether or not I visited them, you know? Is that where you come into pinning the sites, though? Like, for example, like at the at the beginning of a semester now, you know, students will and faculty normally get their their upcoming sites that come up most prominently. Yeah, th so those would be pinned. Those would automatically still be pinned. That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, at least those two when I created them uh, were pinned. So this one is not pinned, and this is pinned. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not crazy about the filled versus non-filled pin because it's a little confusing. I'd rather just see no pin. On the organized pin, there's an option for the users to turn on and off the auto pin new sites. I don't see that in this one. 
Is it under preferences, maybe? But I do think the point about whether or not a pin shows up in terms of it's being solid or an outline is important. Yeah. I think, I mean, I, I, I tend to think of if, if a pin is there, it's going to indicate that the item is pinned. If there's not a pin there, no, no outline. So discussion one should not have a pin next to it if it's not pinned. Correct. Yeah. Now, does that mean that, uh, can you, can you all, can you also pin an entire term? Yeah, it works kind of like the favorites work. Right. No, no. I'm just trying to think of the, just the outline and the, the solid color as, 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 as part of the UI. Uh, maybe it just takes a little getting used to, but I guess it's not unlike the stars. Are the stars empty and then they're filled? Is that how it works now? Yeah, the stars were in, but they were a little different color. This is the current UI. Um, so this, the stars were empty, but when you fill them in, they change color. So they look a little more filled, I guess. <laughs> is that what um, you think they're trying to do with the pin where it was outlined? Yeah, I think the, where was I? Okay, so the pin is just the kind of the outline of the pin when it's not been pinned. Like the outside but, of the outline of the star. Right. But for me, I don't know, maybe it's the shape of the pin icon. Um, or maybe it's the color difference. I don't know, it just doesn't seem as significant of a difference between those two as these two. I have one other question. Well, the other thing is the size of it is because the pins are very narrow. Item. Yeah, it might be it's, the size that's because look at the home icon size. I, I'm yeah. not saying that they're different sizes. Like this next to the spring 22 to the left of it is a, is a larger pin, so it's probably the same size as the home icon. But when you're looking at the items underneath it, you can't. I don't have great vision, so I I quite often find myself going, "What are they talking about?" Because yeah. I can't see it. Um, so I think that that pin is not prominent enough to tell you that it's not pinned or pinned, except for that little black dot, dot issue. Yeah, I agree. And maybe the, the outline could be maybe grayed out as well as an outline. So it's really more different than the pinned version of it. Um, but I, I agree. I think the size is a factor too, because these stars okay. are just bigger. Sorry, what were you saying? So I'm going to counter that. If you make the outline really pale, someone else who has vision issues, who has trouble seeing low contrast stuff, wouldn't be able to see it. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily see the pin icon or the pin outline, so doesn't necessarily realize that it can be pinned. Mm -hmm. Or if the contrast on their monitor is a little wonky, because I've seen sometimes with the current UI, if there's some of the um, text fields that doesn't have a very strong outline it's hard to tell that there's a box there yeah well that's a good point that's a good point i guess what i what i'm after is i just would like to see more of a difference between the two whether it's size or color something i don't know And I don't know about you guys, I'm just kind of bouncing back and forth between the two, but the fonts here are all a lot larger. And here, everything's smaller. Um, Is that a difference of just the default set? Or... I mean, obviously... I'm just might, looking might... at the font. I mean, this is the same browser, so it's not like a, you know zoom issue in the browser but if you look at the fonts here um they're bigger than here right but what i'm asking is that the, the the default for the platform at the moment and you could i'm assuming with the browser you can resize them well i could zoom in my browser but right that's what this I'm is at. the default for the current version for 22. this is the default size it seems it's a lot smaller, a lot thinner, and the icons seem a lot less bold lines. So yeah, I, I, think I just it, think it's a little harder on the eyes. I, I think for it's me. It, it's the minimalist. I, mean, I would be tempted to go a little further than 
I would tempt to be tempted to zoom my browser to see things a little more clearly. You know, here's, here's the other question. Yeah, that we don't want that because then we're get, not giving a, a true picture of it. So you're at 110 percent right now. Okay. Yeah. But you want to be at 100, but the yeah, that was my question. That's 100 percent, and this is 100 percent here. Let me just reload. They are a little lighter and smaller. Which I can understand. The, the, when the left-hand navigation com, uh, collapses, does it collapse to show the icons or does it collapse to show the words? Or... It just okay. collapses. So the icons are going to show up anyway. They're not, like, as they are in the current version, they're not being used to define what the, the um, tool is as it is in the current version. So the, the icons are not nearly as important as they are in the a current version because they are not the only thing that's showing. Right, and I agree with that. And I think if you're trying to collapse that left-hand column and still show those icons, I think it's gonna you're gonna run into a bit of an issue where you've got to have some some piece of something to to not show the other because you're gonna, because you've got multiple courses over there, right? Yeah. So it's gotta somehow be discreet about that. Right. So but in our in our current... have with that new collapse though is. All it does is give you more screen space for the tool you're currently on. You can't easily navigate. Yeah, because I mean, you can navigate tool. in the breadcrumbs, but, yeah, but once you get to the home page of that site, you can't go from, you know, there to from. You can't go from assignments to tests and quizzes. You can't go from lessons to messages. Unless you can't you go from open the collapsed items. To lessons. Christina? I, I don't know. It just seems. It seems, seems like more clicks. It and it takes away the necessary navigation. It, it bothers me. I'm, I'm worried you're going to have students collapse it, not realize that it's collapsed, not be able to do anything. At least in the current version, when it's collapsed, they can still navigate by the tool icons. It's a little more challenging for some of them but they can still navigate. If they collapse it here, they, they really become stuck until they figure out where the unclapse button is. I'm still having some confusion about which site I'm in because it's, I don't think it's clear to the user. And this home home is really bugging me. Yeah, and that is, that is actually because you, you, know, you are currently logged in as faculty, so. Yeah, I'm, this, that's not an admin thing. So when I go into, when I click here, whatever home this is, it still keeps me there, even though I selected a site. Click on yeah, over I think that, that should take you to that site. And then you can, you know, if you want to click into a tool. So now here I'm in this home site, discussion. overview. Mm -hmm. Should Why that, should that selection there? take you directly to the overview of that site? That's what I'm yeah. thinking. Because if I'm in discussion to overview right now, the only way I know that is these little tiny breadcrumbs, unless there's something on the page that tells me. Um, but if I click over here, I think, oh, I want to go to my other class. And I click here. I kind of expect to go there when I click. But I'm still in discussion yeah. two. Yes. Yes. And you're I'm right. looking at discussion one. So I don't know where I am in the system. Yeah. That it, is absolutely correct. Yeah, it's very confusing. I'm mm. just playing on the just playing on the other side and while you all are playing over here too. And like whenever you click on the I think you all were discussing this. When you click on a tool, it automatically um bunches everything up so you can't navigate from tool to tool because you don't know yeah. like whatever whatever site you're in it should not collapse it back whenever you click to go to a different area it should leave that collapsed open and possibly highlight bold underline uh the site that you're in so that you know that you're actually in that site and there it, right yeah There's it's no a little visual um, representation of where the heck you are yeah no yeah. it's not <laughs> At least when when we in our current version, we the the site that you're in stays highlighted at right. the top mm -hmm. navigation, and there's nothing here to give that same visual indication of where the heck you are. Yeah, yeah. good good note. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah well, you, well, you well, don't well, have well, a sense well, of place well, at all. Yeah, 
Um, and this thing is just kind of floating in the middle of the sea of blackness. Okay. <laughs> it's going back and forth. <laughs> Isn't it? I mean, it's yeah, just sort of there. Uh, it needs to move somewhere. I don't know where, but it should hey, well, be just... Uh, maybe this is not far enough along, but what happens when you publish the site or the site's left unpublished? Where is that? Is it, does that notification stay there? Uh, let's see if I can get to that. All right. So let's go to... If you, if you have a site Texas, unpublished. Here it is. All right, so let's unpublish and see what happens. Okay, which site am I in? I'm in two. <laughs> see, I don't know. I don't know which, it, even the current site, it's not obvious enough for me that I'm actually in that site. I don't believe it. <laughs> that I'm oh, actually you're there. It's lying. <laughs> yeah. It's lying to me. It's all a cruel prank. Oh, no. Okay, so now <laughs> this is there's interesting. There's no, no visual indication that it's unpublished. Yeah. That's now, going to be a yeah, problem. that's a problem. Well, now it could be an oversight on the part of just trying to get some of the framing done initially, and that that can pop up. But my assumption is it would it show up? Would it show up? I assume it would show up below the breadcrumb. Well, when you have an unpublished site now, let me go into a site and unpublish it. It's a big thing up at the top, right? Yeah, yeah, and that that's the idea, right? Like, so if that indi indicator is so, going to be somewhere, would it show up below the breadcrumb? as that and does it doesn't it do that well we don't so have here that. it's above the tool above the tool so if you're like navigating it's kind of above the tool name yeah so where, would then, we, um, where would we place that tool name doesn't exist in the Trinity yeah version. here we just have the breadcrumbs but it doesn't show up anywhere I guess I'm used to sort of the big bold tool name because for me those breadcrumbs seem so small and so easily overlooked yeah. and so narrow. They really do. I I would like to see the tool name big somewhere. So I know that did it log me out or am I in a different window? I'm in a different window, sorry. Um yeah, it just it's really hard to tell, you know, yeah, it's here, but I kind of miss the icon and Maybe and a little more context. I like my pretty icons. Yeah. And not every tool has the title real big right there. Yeah. Like, what does this say? See, this one, there, you there. just, you have to figure out that you're in conversations. I mean, maybe you know what that screen looks like, but it doesn't have the tool name anywhere. Except in the tiny little, teeny tiny breadcrumb. Yeah, that's too small. It might also be more helpful if it does keep if we if they change it so it keeps the current site expanded and highlights the current tool too. That might help sort of give the where are we. Right. And some of these are probably known issues, like maybe they're adding icons. We don't know. I know the ones over here were missing until recently, so maybe they just haven't added them back in. I don't know. But yeah, it just seems teeny tiny up there. And I kind of almost want to see not this drop down menu, which I think looks weird there, but I kind of almost want to see something in here that tells me what site I'm in like my current site. Shouldn't the current site then be slightly highlighted or something that says you're, you are here and that That's, home on the, uh, has to go away. That, that. Home yeah. Is the home sample. is confusing because it's always there. It never goes away. And so it doesn't really provide you any useful information. It's just a little confusing because if you have a home in a site, you might have home site home or the other screen we were in before said home home and then something else. Now, if you're on your home site, it's home home, which yeah. is really long. That's to do just 
yeah, so the, one of those homes needs to go away. But I kind of want to see, like, the current site up here. I don't know. Is that just because we're used to it being there? No, not as a favorite, like not like this where it's highlighted. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about in text, like in this black banner, it says discussion one SPM or SMPL, whatever. So I know, hey, that's where I'm at. That's why I was thinking that the, the breadcrumb resources, like the breadcrumb where you, like the first home has to just pff, guy by, but the, the, um, like the discussion one sample, I, I would almost want that larger because you are here mm -hmm. like that. If that was bigger because you are in it, like if you clicked in resources, then resources would get bigger. I don't know. That's probably asking too much, but still big breadcrumbs. Well, yeah, at least are... as a notification of where you are, even if they bold or if they, um, I don't know how that would work though with accessibility because would they, yeah, they should be able to tell because once they're in it, they're in it. Yeah. Okay. It, it's, it's a thought visually. Um, cause if you've nav collapsed the left-hand navigation, that's the only place you can tell where you are. Yeah. And, and it's easy to overlook it. Because it's just a small font. And depending on what you have here, it's going to draw your eye. Right, because it's big. It's smaller than the tab-sized font, mm -hmm. or close, so close. It looks smaller, but that's where you are. So it should be just slightly larger. Because right, yeah, minimum the size of the font in the actual folder name. See, it says all site files discussion sample one resources. But if you're trying to navigate between resources, mm. like I want to go to assignments now. Yeah, good. I can't luck. get. I can't get to assignments. <laughs> I yeah. have to. And even if I go back here, I can't get to ago. assignments. I have right. to go here, and then I have to wait. I'm in the wrong site. Okay, over here to assignments. Right. And then get to it. So it's a lot of bouncing around to get to something yeah. that really should just be one click. Absolutely. All right. Well, we are almost out of time. Does anybody else have any other thoughts? Um, and again, none of my um, stream of consciousness <laughs> rambling is, is any sort of authority. I'm just looking at a lot of this for the first time myself and just reacting to it as trying to be in a, a user so, mindset. So, um, you know. So, Wilma, this is, this is Chuck. Wilma, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, I'm in the car. I switched to the car. Um, so, uh, I, I have a lot of thoughts and I've been keeping, I was, I was all worried that we were going to like consider this perfect and never change anything. And I was like all nervous about that. Um, and, uh, and the interesting thing is, is what you are hitting on is like right in my notes. Right. So um, I, I won't reiterate like a lot of what was said, you know, every, just about everything I heard, because I've been using it like for 48 hours now doing development and, and whatever. And I'm like, ah! You know, and and and, uh, and so I mean, the, the, a lot of it is wonderful, but they're just these little kind of tactical things that just annoy you after a while. So as I, you know, I think that the biggest thing from this is it's we're going to spend a little time on this, right? Uh, and we're going to have a couple of iterations on this uh, because I just think it wasn't. There's a big difference between wireframes and working with working code. You can like go, love it, love it, love it. Wireframes, great. And then when you start using it, you're like, well, okay, you just didn't see that interaction, that multi-step, two one click becomes two clicks. Is the the big thing I think is we can't like make one click become two clicks. We just can't. Um, uh, and uh, and some of the things that were said, uh, some of the things that were said, I'm like, yeah, and I see how Canvas does that, and they do it really bad when the site numbers get really big. So we got to be careful, I think. Uh, saying, oh, as, as someone kind of said, I want all my sites to always show up everywhere all the time. Like, Ugh, I, I'll, I'll show you that. Uh, and that, that doesn't, so the point is, is this is going to be a bit of iteration. 
and uh, and so it's kind of like enough. It's going to be like anything else we do, like conversations, where we talk and we do something. We talk and we do something. It's going to take a while, but it'll be okay um, because most of it's outstanding. So I'll stop talking now. Yeah, and that's a really good point. I mean, just because we're nitpicking doesn't mean that this isn't awesome. I mean, I really like the change. And I think it freshens things up. I think right now we're just kind of trying to find the, the places that are a little bit rough and smooth them out. But um, but once we kind of identify those little rough patches, I think it's going to be really great. So um, it's definitely an iterative process. And we'll keep banging away at it, trying to, you know, find any friction areas. Um, but I think overall it's going to be a really nice uh, new UI for Sakai. So I'm excited about it. All right, well, we are out of time today. Um, so I'll go ahead and um, remind everybody that next week or next call in two weeks, um, we're not meeting because it's the virtual conference. And then the following meeting, the first meeting in December, we're gonna be meeting at a new time because we're combining with the UX folks. That will likely be at 11 a.m. on the same Wednesdays that we normally meet, so an hour later than this call. Uh, but I'll confirm that because I'm trying to shift another meeting so that it doesn't conflict. Um, so I'll confirm that before December um, 7th, I think, is, is the, the date. I, I have to look at my calendar. But anyway, the first meeting in December. Um, so anyway, thank you guys for attending. Also, if you want to look at uh, Trinity a little bit more and do a little more brainstorming, we're going to pick up the same topic today, later this afternoon on the UX call. Um, so we're going to be looking at Trinity and just kind of making notes on things that might need tweaking. Um, so if you wanted, if you arrived late or if you just have more to say or you've played with it a little bit more and have more ideas, feel free to join the UX call in um, Big Blue Button Room 3 at 2 p.m. Eastern today. So thanks, everybody. Thanks, Wilma. I'm probably not going to join the UX call because I figure the, the things I saw as big problems are ones we already pointed out. Mm -hmm. and everything else, it's little, okay, preference this, pre my preference is this, maybe bigger, maybe smaller. But the, the, the few big problems with the new user interface, the two clicks to get to new tool, the concern about collapsing um, the navigation completely, and the lack of the unpublished sites, those are the big problems I've saw, and the rest of it is mostly just getting used to where everything is now. Yeah, yeah. And that's but just I, an adjustment that, yeah. you know, after you use it a little bit, everybody makes that, that leap. Yeah. And I think as we use it too, once um, QA can get their hands on it, we'll be finding, okay, where this th this feature went away, this mm -hmm. feature went away, like the, <laughs> like the ability to turn on and off the auto pin. Yeah. You know, that was an option where users could say, you know, default is I'm added to a new site, it's automatically pinned, but I have the option of turning it off and saying, I want to control my pins. Right. Because like for me, I'm creating new sites whenever people need it and I don't always need to keep access to it. I'm making it for others. Right. So, so yours is a little pinned. different, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> that's one more step for you to unpin. So I just changed my, that option for me to just don't pin it automatically. And if I want a site pinned, I'll pin it. Mm -hmm. We'll find all those little quirks as we go. So maybe there can be another setting for admins or something. Who knows? Yep. Or, you know, instructors who they start creating their sites. Like we automatically create the sites for the instructors. The instructors don't create them. Mm-hmm. So I start creating spring classes in October. Instructors who are still teaching their fall classes don't want to see their spring classes yet. Right. The students aren't going to see them because they're not published, but they get pinned on the instructor side and the instructors get annoyed. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. So having it be so the instructors could easily change that setting for themselves if they wanted to. Then they can say, all right, I'll go 
And in January, I'll pin, just click the pin button for spring 2022 or spring 2023 and pin all my spring sites and unpin all my fall. Sorry, I was just navigating around, making sure we didn't miss it, that it wasn't there hiding. And But no, I don't see it. I went to preferences. <laughs> I was under the user menu and yeah. in the view of the organized pins, my organized pin sites, which is where it is in the current UI. So, yeah. Okay. Well, I better let you go. So, um, but thank you for attending and for contributing lots of good comments. And we have them in the recording, so I can pass this off to Adrian or Canal or whoever's going to be doing a lot of this stuff. So, we can uh, keep track of all the feedback. I'm good at offering opinions. <laughs> all right. Well, you have a great rest of your day, and I'll talk to you soon. Yep. Bye. Bye.